All right. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. I hope you had a good morning today on this Friday. Um, but as people come in, we'll go ahead and just um, get started. Um, my name is Nassim Nozertosh. I'm one of the assistant directors of New Student Family Services, and I'm excited to help introduce the Atkins Library we uh, webinar. Um, just really quickly, some ground um, things that you all should know is that your chat is disabled and your video is muted, so we can't hear or see you. Um, but if you do have questions, please utilize the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, there will be some time at the end for any questions that you may have. Um, so please go ahead and go ahead and put questions in at any point that you have during this presentation. Um, you won't really be able to use the chat feature to ask questions. So if you put them in there, we won't be able to see them. So use the Q&A function. Um, but we will go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Ryan Harris, who's the head of research and instructional services. Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon and welcome to UNC Charlotte. Um, thank you for coming to our presentation. Uh, this is going to be an introduction to a lot of resources and services at Atkins Library. And our speakers today are myself. Um, as it was said earlier, I am the head of research and instructional services. Catherine Tinglestad, the instruction and curriculum engagement coordinator will be speaking, as well as Beth Caruso, our digital pedagogy and emerging technologies librarian, Brandy Beam, our instruction librarian archivist, and Nellie Ornett is our humanities librarian. And please type in your questions. We want to answer everything. We know that this is a different school year, so we may not answer everything, but hopefully we will give you a really good introduction to Atkins Library. So today we're going to be going over some core library services and spaces you should be aware of, how we support research and instruction, and how we will help you throughout your career with this. We're going to talk about Area 49, which is a great suite of technology, spaces, and equipment. Uh, we'll also talk about special collections, and we'll end with student engagement and talk about ways we interact with you all and do programming for you all specifically. And then we'll do questions. So first, we're going to go over library services and spaces. And just to give you a heads up, this is what the library website looks like. Uh, the URL is library.uncc.edu. And there should be a quick link from your My UNCC page as well. I'm showing you this part of the website. There is a top bar menu. But if you notice, there's like a search box. That's how you would search for books and things that the library holds in its co in collection. But I wanted to point out these icons on the main screen. These are kind of quick links that are really popular and that you'll probably use a lot when you're here at the library. So my accounts lets you log into your library account or your interlibrary loan account, which is something I'll talk about a little bit later. We have study room reservations, research guides, hours, which our hours are a little bit different this semester, printing, and then the contact us page is really useful because that's how you can chat with us or send an email or call us in. So I just wanted to point out these um, icons because it's like a quick way to get access to a lot of the popular services and resources within the library. So a little bit about the library hours in the fall. Uh, these hours are starting September 7th. We are also open the week of the 31st as students start moving in, but those hours are shorter and you can check the library's website for those shortened hours. But um, starting on the first day of classes, Monday through Thursday, the library will be open from 7.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Fridays were open from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday from 1 to 11 p.m. You will need your Niner ID card after 5 p.m. We're going to have card tap access after 5 p.m. every day that we're open during those times where it's applicable. Some information about library spaces. If you've done a tour of the library, you'll notice we have a tall tower, but our tower floors are actually gonna be closed during the fall semester and probably sometime through spring semester as well. That's for a couple reasons. One is to just kind of improve safety in the building, um, reduce contact between people. But we're also working on a project where we're gonna be moving some of our print materials to an offsite storage. That'll be a benefit for you all in the end because it'll increase the study space within the library. So the floors that will be available to you are the ground floor through the third floor. 
uh, you can enter the ground floor on the north side of campus and the first floor on the um, south side. And the first floor, which is the south side entrance, that's where you walk in and the, our main desk service point is there. So that's just kind of a way to orient yourself. There is gonna be study space throughout the library, but it is distanced. Uh, we are following the rules of the campus and health recommendations. So all the tables are spaced out. They only have one chair where, you know, we know you like to study together, but we're, we really can't do group study right now. And masks will be of course mandated, which is a common theme for the entire campus where you have to wear masks. Um, a lot of the computer or a lot of the tables will have computers on them. They, they will get cleaned periodically as well, but there will be different study spaces on all these floors. We do have study rooms and study carols that you can uh, reserve. Uh, the criteria just for health and safety is that it's only going to be one person per room. Uh, reservations can be made for three hours a day as well. So that is something that'll be accessible, but it's accessible with the idea that everyone follows the rules. Like if the one person per room isn't necessarily being followed, we might have to revisit this policy uh, just to ensure the safety of everyone on campus. Uh, Randy's gonna talk a little bit more about this later, but there is a 10th floor special collections area that will be accessible as well, but it's gonna be available by appointment only or if you're in a class and they make an appointment. Some library services you should be aware of is book retrieval. So if you're searching our catalog and you find a book in our collection, we can actually pull it for you so you don't have to go up. Well, you won't be able to go up in the stacks right now, but even if it was something in popular reading or on the second or third floor, we'd pull it for you. So someone from the library will pull it for you, put it on our hold shelf and it's held there for uh, 10 days and you can pull it and then check it out at the circulation desk. Uh, we also have interlibrary loan. So anything that the library doesn't have in its collection, be it a book or a journal article, we can request that for you and we obtain it for you at no charge. And books are generally in print format, but a lot of the journals you'll just get delivered to you electronically. Uh, it's important to know that you can get help at the first floor circulation and research help desk. Uh, circulation features our services are available at all hours when the library is open, but research help is provided Monday through Thursday, 11 to 7, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then Friday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. So um, Catherine's gonna talk a little bit more about the research help you can get, but you would just, if you have a question about a class assignment or finding appropriate resources, that's where you could do that. And then with circulation desk, that's where you can check out laptops, um, ask questions, uh, get calculators, things like that. And I was talking about the circulation desk, but this is where you can check out different items and equipment. Uh, Beth will talk about other equipment that's available from Area 49, but some of the things you can check out are popular reading and DVDs on the first floor. While you're gonna be very busy studying, you might also wanna take a little break and rent a movie or read the most recent hot fiction book that's out. You can check out laptops on the first floor um, from the circulation desk area and laptop checkouts are for seven days. It's normally 24 hours, but we've extended that just due to the circumstances. And we can extend it beyond those seven days based on need and you'll just have to talk to people at that desk. We also have calculators that you can check out as well. We also have different vending areas that uh, students often ask us about. So uh, vending machines are available on the ground first and second floor. The ground floor also has a microwave. We are gonna allow eating in the library, you know, take off your mask, eat, please put your mask back on. And since we're gonna be distanced, we're allowing eating in the library. So the ground floor has a coffee machine, um, frozen vending and a microwave and food and drinks. We also have Pete's Coffee connected to the library. I believe that's going to be uh, takeout orders only, but it's another way to get your caffeine fix. On the first floor, we have food vending, but there's also a like, supplies vending machine that's stocked by Barnes and Noble bookstore. So you can get like blue books, pencils. They've talked about putting masks in there as well, but we're not sure if that's gonna happen. So the library is a place where we want you to study, lots of services and resources available, but we also just want everyone to be mindful of, you know, the safety measures that the campus is um, 
having everyone practice and that'll be in the library too. Probably even more so in the library because it's often a lot of people in the library. So next, Catherine is gonna be talking about how we support research and instruction. Catherine? Catherine? It's connecting. Oh, okay. You're going to want to unmute, uh, Catherine. You're muted. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Dingolstad. I'm the instruction coordinator at Atkins Library, and I am going to share some information with you all about uh, research, research and instruction at the library. Uh, these are just some of the subject librarians at Atkins Library. Our librarians focus on subjects ranging from history to engineering to business with a lot of other subjects in between. Um, they can help teach students to develop research topics, to find information from a wide variety of sources, and to really conduct in, uh, research independently. The subject librarians teach library sessions in curriculum classes and they're available to meet with students in small groups and individually. And in addition to the librarians that fall under research and instructional services, we have a team of instruction librarians in Area 49, as well as Special Collections. And you'll learn more about those two areas in later parts of this presentation. If you have an assignment or research project that you need help with, you can schedule a consultation with a subject librarian. Um, during the fall semester, individual and small group consultations with subject librarians will be conducted either online or by phone. Um, to schedule a consultation, there are a number of different ways you can do this. Um, you can email your subject librarian you can complete a consultation request form, which is available on the library's website, um, or you can use Connect, which is a system that allows undergraduate students to access campus resources, and it's available to you at my.uncc.edu. Students can also ask questions and get help from our library staff in a number of ways, by calling, by using our chat service, um, by emailing, and by texting us. And assistance will also be available at the circulation and research help desk on the first floor of the library um, this fall. What you see on this screen are research guides and how-to videos. And the library has a wealth of these resources that will um, really help students uh, learn how to find resources and conduct their research. Um, these are all located on the library's website. The research guides, such as the one you see on the left, which is open access images and videos, are collections of information and resources related to a specific subject, course, or program. And then the how-to videos, which you see on the right, an example of. Um, this one is searching for ebooks. And these help our students learn how to find books, use resources, and conduct research. This fall, most library instruction will happen online. 
Um, library instruction takes place through collaboration with our instructors, our faculty on campus during our regular class sessions. So you may see um, a librarian come to one of your classes to do an instruction session and actually one or more of your, of your classes. Um, the instruction librarians teach students to find, assess, integrate, and create information. Um, during this semester, library instruction is going to be incorporated into both hybrid and online classes. Atkins Library provides students with access to more than 600 databases that contain articles, videos, images, and eBooks. And all of this is available at no cost for students to use in their assignments and their research. Additionally, the library has over 700,000 physical books available to our students. And we're constantly updating our collection to meet the needs of the students and faculty at UNC Charlotte. So now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Beth Caruso, who is going to talk about Area 49. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Beth Caruso, and I'm one of the librarians with Area 49. Next. So Area 49 is mostly on the second floor of the library, and it's the library's collection of innovation and uh, innovation spaces and services. So you can see on the left, we promote creativity, collaboration, innovation, analysis, experimentation, and all other good things like that that you can think of. Um, you can use Area 49 for both academic and personal projects. Um, there are just a few limitations on our uh, on our operations for this year, such as social dis distancing, uh, timing to allow for cleaning and things like that. And those, um, that information on those changes will be out on the library's website very soon. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll try to address some of those things as we're getting into the different spaces. So the first thing I want to talk about is the technology support desk. So that is going to be on the second floor of the library. The first thing that you see when you go up the main stairs of the library to the second floor. And uh, notice first that the hours of the technology support desk are a little bit less than the library's regular hours. So um, the hours can vary from space to space. And so it's probably your best bet if you're going to come join us to take a look at the library or at the different spaces hours on the library website. The technology support desk is really the service point for Area 49. So if you're trying to figure out something with the spaces, if you're trying to help get help with library technology, um, then you can come up to the technology support desk. It is really important to note not IT support for campus. So if you're having if you're having trouble with Canvas or some other university owned system, then you would need to go to IT support, but we can tell you where that is. You can also check out a lot of different equipment here and the difference between the equipment at the tech desk versus the circulation desk is really what it's used for. So the technology support desk has equipment that is a little bit more specialized um, for certain types of activities. So we have cameras, DSLR cameras, uh, video cameras such as the GoPro and a bunch of accessories for it. We have the uh, we have 360 degree cameras such as the Ricoh Theta in the bottom there, um, where you can record 360 degree video and um, and photos. We have a lot of different recording equipment for audio recording, so microphones like you see here, and also some lapel mics and more. We have tripods and a whole bunch of other accessories for our things, and we also have elements of circuitry kits that are associated with our makerspace. We do have some uh, we do have some full kits so you can take it home and kind of work on a project um, or we also have some uh, smaller circuitry elements that you can kind of check out all together and start on a project. You do have to return those um, but they are most of the things at the technology support desk are seven day checkouts um, and we can help you learn how to use all these things. The next thing that we have, uh, two of our spaces, we have the Easy Video Studio and the Multimedia Lab. So the first one on the left, the Easy Video Studio, it is an all-in-one studio to record videos and you just need a USB drive. 
Now, I know a lot of people do have USB drives, but if you don't, or if you can't find yours, I know people lose them very easily, um, then you can actually check one out from the tech desk for the amount of time that you would be in the Easy Video Studio um, so that you can use it in there. So all you have to do is get that USB drive, plug it in, the entire room starts up, and you can record your video. If you notice there, there's a blue screen. Uh, so wear anything except blue or else you'll be a talking head. Um, but there will be another screen on the wall in front of you so that you can see everything that's going on on the screen. You can put different backdrops. You can use, um, you can use PowerPoint or Google Slides or anything, that, anything else that's on your laptop to do a presentation. We've had all kinds of presentations and videos recorded in there and it's a really great space to use. Um, that is for this semester. That's going to be our one space that is going to be academic use only just because of the high level of recording that the people are going to be having to do for classes. Um, but once you are finished with the uh, with your video in the easy video studio. If you would like to just use it as is you can upload it to wherever you'd like because all of those files are on your flash drive. If you would like to edit it or if you have something else that you'd like to edit, then you can use our multimedia lab. And the multimedia lab has a bunch of iMac computers with the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite and a whole bunch more editing programs. Um, you'll see here that the computers are next to each other. That is changing, I believe, today and tomorrow. Um, so you'll see that socially distanced as well. Um, one of the benefits of the multimedia lab is that if you are not in a program that guarantees you access to the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, you can get access to it here um, instead of having to having to pay for it. And all you need is your your Niner Net login. Next. Next, we have the maker space. The maker space is generally open Mondays through Fridays, 10 to 4. And here you can make things exactly as it sounds. So you can come in here and make things by using our, uh, our crafting and DIY supplies in and on our back cabinets. You can come in here because you're really stressed and you just want to paint something, or you can fiddle with, with our circuitry kits, whatever you'd like to do. Um, so we, we go for um, uh, low tech making, but we also go with high tech making. And if you would like to use any of our machines, then you can take a training to um, you can take a training to learn how to use those. So we do have 3D printers. Um, the the 3D printed octopus on the bottom right is the Lulzbot octopus. It's one of our 3D printers. Um, so 3D printers use um, use heated filament to deposit it onto the print bed to build up 3D structures. It's kind of like a really controlled hot glue gun. Um, so you can you can uh, take a training to use the 3D printers. You can take a training to use our laser cutter, which uses a laser to cut and engrave materials, or even our CNC router, which uses a bit to cut and engrave materials that can't go in the laser cutter. Um, you can use other machines that don't require training, such as our two sewing machines, which are very popular, um, our uh, large format printer, all other kinds of things in there. Um, if you do have a 3D print or even a large format print that you would like to have, but you don't have time to take a training or to do it yourself, you can actually submit that request to us online on the website um, and we will get that done for you. Um, the 3D printing and any, uh, any materials that, we, that you would use with machines, so the filament for 3D printing or the large format printer paper and a few other things, um, they cost just a little bit, but it's, it's significantly less than you would get anywhere else. Uh, for the large format printer, if you have a poster that you need to print for a project or a presentation or anything of that nature, um, you can submit it and get a pretty quick turnaround time. Um, so if you don't know what to do here, but you think it's a really cool space and you want to interact with something, just let us know. Stop by and we can help you figure out what that is. Next, we have our newest space, which is the photogrammetry lab. And here you can create 3D models of physical objects. So if you take a look at the turntable on the table in the in the room there, there's a tiny little plant. Um, so if you have a physical object that you want to turn into a 3D model, this is definitely the place to do it. Here, the camera will take a bunch of pictures from all angles, and then the software on the computer will stitch all of those together to make that model. That model can then be put into um, uh, different game creation programs or other digital programs, or you can even 3D print that model as well. This is the gaming lab. And again, we will be socially distancing in the gaming lab. This is definitely from a picture pre 
pre-pandemic. Um, but for the gaming lab, we have an Alienware gaming PC, an Xbox One and Xbox 360, PlayStation 4 Pro, and an Atari, and also an emulator computer. Um, and you can check out games, controllers, and headsets at the tech desk for three hours at a time. And it's first come, first serve. Um, and this was originally uh, originally built because there are people in a lot of different disciplines, but particular, particularly our gaming certificate, um, who do need to play games for classes. But it is open to you even if you are playing a game just because you are bored and want to come in or need some stress relief or whatever it might be. We also have, in addition to the gaming lab itself, we also have our classic consoles available for checkout. And those are the consoles that have been released those are the classic consoles that have been re-released recently um, with games already installed on them. And so that's Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Atari Flashback 9, and PlayStation Classic. Um, so stop by the gaming lab when you get a chance. And our visualization lab. So this room looks closest to a classroom, but you can actually use it. You can see the giant screen right there. Um, you can use it for collaboration and analyzing data. If you have a lot of things to see all at once and you can't really do it on a single screen, this screen is extremely helpful. We also have high powered computers. You can project your laptop up here if you have a program that we don't have. We also have an HTC Vive VR headset. And yes, you can use that even if you're not using it for a class. Um, all you need to do for the visualization lab is take a training and we um, that information will be on our operating procedures that will soon be online. Um, but aside from the HTC Vive VR headset, we will have uh, it, very soon, we will have another headset available for checkout from the tech desk, and that's going to be the Oculus Quest. So very exciting things. So finally, whether you are physically on campus or you are in your dorm room taking class or you are in a completely different state, we're here to help you. Um, you might be seeing us in your classes, so we might give you help specific to some of the classes that you might be using the, these spaces for. But no matter what you might want to use them for, we can help you with figuring out how you can approach unconventional projects, we can help you figure out what technology to use to complete a project, especially if you're not familiar with some of the technologies out there. And then we can also just figure out, help you figure out how to make your ideas happen. Um, so you might not know what we have, or you might uh, be curious and have an idea and say, how can I make this happen? Talk with us and we can help. So you can either come up and see us in area 49, or you can also email us at atkinstechsupport at uncc.edu. Either way is perfectly fine, but we hope to see you soon. So I will pass it off to Randy Beam for Special Collections. Go ahead, Randy. Hi, everybody. I'm Randy Beam. I'm the Instruction Archivist, and I'm going to tell you all a little bit um, about Special Collections today. So with Special Collections, we want you to think global, but we want you to research local. So what do we collect? We collect manuscripts, university archives, um, government documents, maps, uh, old and rare maps, rare books, and oral histories. Uh, manuscripts are any set of unpublished materials by a person or an organization. Um, and oral histories are any time that one person is interviewed regarding um, their experience with a historical event or just about their life in general. And all of our collections have a connection to Charlotte and UNC, um, and UNC Charlotte. Now, where are they though? They are available um, to view in the reading room on the 10th floor. Our materials are unique and they're rare. They're one of a kind. So you can't check them out like you can with all of the great technology Beth talked about or all of the books that we all know the library for. Um, but you can see them and you can view them on the 10th floor. Next slide. Great. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so special collections, how do you visit? So just like Ryan talked about earlier in, this, in the presentation, um, in-person visits will be done by appointment only, but you don't really need a reason for an appointment. Um, if you just want to come and see some of the cooler things that we have, our oldest book is from 1471. Our oldest item um, are the set of Sumerian clay tablets. They're from 2500 BCE. You can just send me an email. It's rbeam at uncc.edu, or you can send an email to our main email, which is spec, S-P-E-C, dash call at uncc.edu. 
Um, and just to get you thinking about the types of materials you might want to come and look at, um, some of my favorite items, we have a whole folder of letters congratulating Bonnie Cohn, who founded Charlotte College. Um, they were congratulating her on when UNC Charlotte became part of the UNC system. It was, it's very um, iconic to have a woman found a, found a college. Uh, and so there are a lot of really wonderful letters from people all over the country. Um, we have a letter from Alice Walker, who is the author of The Color Purple. Um, she sent a letter to, governor, to the governor of North Carolina advocating for the freedom of TJ Reddy, uh, who had been a student at UNC Charlotte. He helped found the Black Student Union, um, but he was wrongfully imprisoned for burning down a stable. Um, so she wrote a letter in support of him um, receiving his freedom. And then my favorite rare book right now at the moment, um, it changes all the time, but it's Sir Walter Raleigh's The History of the World. It's from the 1600s, which is why history is spelled that way. Um, it's a really huge, beautiful book. It has a really great binding, um, but the inside is also really cool. It has really interesting um, maps from the 1600s of what we all thought was the history of the world. Um, so that's a really great thing to come in and check out. And then, next slide. However, if you want to take a deep dive um, with our digital collections, you're more than welcome. We do have some materials available online. All of our oral histories are online um, through goldmine.uncc.edu. Uh, we also have some digital copies of our manuscripts. So not all of our manuscripts are available, but we have some prominent collections like Kelly Alexander Sr., who um, was a prominent member of the NAACP here in Charlotte. Uh, and we also have some other materials as well. Um, and we have a lot of our historic maps are available online too, to take a look. Um, we also have a few other prominent collections that I pulled from. So we have some different materials from the Civil War era. We know that people really enjoy those things. So that handwritten letter is a letter from the Civil War. Um, Bryant McMurray's photographs, they are photographs um, of different, race car events. Um, and so we have a photograph from August GM. And then we also have a photograph um, from the Charlotte uh, Planning and Development Committee. Uh, so feel free, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. Um, if you ever want to take, come and see an appointment, um, feel free to send me an email. We also have really great views on the 10th floor, um, but we do have to do an appointment. So. I will pass it on over to Natalie Ornat, our humanities librarian, and she'll tell you a little bit about the really interesting um, student activities that we have at Atkins Library. Great, thank you, Randy. Um, so, hey everyone, I'm Natalie Ornat, and I'm the humanities librarian at Atkins. And I really hope that at this point, you are super excited to explore the library, hunt for that favorite study spot, um, maybe play with some of those cool machines and gadgets in Area 49 and discover some of those treasures that Randy was just talking about up in the Special Collections Reading Room. Um, and by now, you can probably see how important your academic success is to us at the library and how much we really want to support you on your way to get your degree. Um, but we also recognize that college is a time for so much more than studying. Um, so I'm here just to share some of the really fun and exciting opportunities the library has for students to take a break from their studies, meet some new people, and to have some fun. So the library hosts events and programs for students every semester that are free and open to all students. And these events are actually really great spots to get some food um, and meet new people as well who you might have common interests with. So this screen is showing some images just of some of the fun events that we put on this past year. So we hosted actually a movie marathon um, during Halloween um, that was actually in the visualization lab, which Beth showed an image of. So you can imagine what that was like with that big screen. It can get really dark in there. We had some popcorn and candy, which was super was really fun. Um, and then during midterms and finals, we always bring in this loyal group of therapy dogs so that students can take a break, maybe make some new furry friends. Um, and then we were also really excited to celebrate Black History Month at the library this year. We created a game of Guess Who for influential Black leaders in history, um, which was a really great opportunity to allow students on campus to really broaden their knowledge of Black history. 
Um, and then we also organized a reading circle of black literature up in our special collections area. Um, and we're always trying to think of new and fun events that students might want to attend at the library. And we're excited always to hear from students as well to see what they want to do. So for me, dogs, donuts, and yoga would be the ideal way to spend my weekend. Um, and lucky for all of us at Atkins, these are actually all things that we've offered at the library during finals week. So Atkins has a lineup of these stress busting activities that we put on to help students survive finals every semester. And we call this series of events, De-Stress for Success. And all of these events are totally free for students and they're designed to help students stay positive, focused, and really kind of create that sense of calm during what can be kind of a stressful finals period. Um, so last year, what we did is we brought in those therapy dogs for students to play and pet. Um, and for those early bird studiers on reading day, we gave away donuts and coffee to help kind of fuel that day. Um, and reading day, for those who don't know, is that day right after the last day of classes and right before your final starts. It's a really great time to start catching up on studying. Um, we've even hosted a yoga session at the library. Um, and when we went online with these activities at the end of the spring semester, we actually had a virtual meditation session. Um, and then also we have a Spotify playlist, which is pretty cool. Um, and this was a playlist of songs that was actually created by our own students. So you can kind of get a sense of what everyone is listening to um, when you're passing them in the library and you see everyone with their headphones on. And then we also have a place that's in that visualization lab that we call the recharge room. And so this is a spot that you could go to during finals to take a break, listen to some calming music. We have snacks in there, uh, maybe do some coloring books, do uh, some work on a puzzle and just kind of take a break and relax for a couple minutes. So as you can imagine, this looks a little different during the end of our spring semester um, and probably in upcoming semesters as well. So we're really just working on ways right now to try and COVID proof these activities and translate them into an online environment. And what you see right now on the screen are some events that we are going to be uh, embarking on for this um, current fall, so this semester that we're excited to have you join us for. Um, so you've probably heard about Gold Rush maybe and some of the really great campus events that are happening during that um, week of September 4th through 13th. So some things that the library is going to be doing that we definitely want you to join us with, um, we're going to be having virtual meet and greets. So instead of, you know, walking past the library and, you know, in years before you might have seen people who are ready to greet you, hand out some material to learn about the library. We'll have online rooms that you can hop in on, chat with a librarian, ask them any questions you have, or find out more about maybe some of the spaces and services that you heard about today. Um, and then we're also going to be premiering a really exciting video series called Library Secrets. Um, and these are going to be short clips about some really cool features of the library that sometimes people don't know a whole lot about. Um, so you'll be able to watch those and become an Atkins expert yourself. Um, and then we'll also be sharing a BuzzFeed quiz all about Atkins Library that you can take. Um, and when you take it, no matter if you get 100% or, you know, 0%, you can still enter in to win a um, Target gift card, which is pretty cool and something that I'm sure everyone would put to good use during the start of the school year. Um, and we're also hoping to support our students and encourage voter engagement during the election that's coming up in 2020. Um, so we're going to be helping folks check their re voter registration and register to vote in Mecklenburg County, especially if you'll be in the county and at the university on November 3rd. Um, and we're going to be serving as an official partner for National Voter Registration Day, and that's coming up on September 22nd. Right, go to the next slide. And um, we are always wanting to hear from students to see what you all think we should put on as far as programming. We get our best ideas from students. So if you have an idea, um, if you think it's brilliant, if you think it's maybe not brilliant, we still want to hear it. So please tell us what types of events or programs you'd like to see at Atkins Library. And I put my email down at the bottom. So feel free to shoot me a note with any of your ideas for some fun things you think would be nice to see at the library when you take a study break. So with that, I'm going to hand it back um, 
so that we can answer some questions. Does anyone have any questions? I have some questions from the registration form that I'm happy to share. Yeah, that'd be great. To go ahead and get kind of the ball rolling. But if anyone does have any questions, please go ahead and put it in the Q&A section and we'd be happy to help. Um, but the first question that we do have is, what makes the library so popular among students as a study, a study space um, compared to, to private study rooms in the residence halls? I, well, I think one of the reasons is, is quite a few students don't live on campus. So it's a space that when they're in between classes, they can come. Um, I think some of our spaces, like particularly the ground floor, has like very new, more modern furniture, like these little studies pods, things like that. I think some students just think it's a more academic environment and they're more studious when they're in the library, too. So I think those are some of the reasons why it's popular. It's also like a very centrally located place. So um, if you have classes on opposite side of campus, but a break in between, the library is kind of a good place to stop. I think just to like piggyback off what Ryan said, I've noticed, especially if you're like a chemistry major or you're a math major, um, a lot of those majors, we have a lot of access to whiteboards in the library. And I feel like I see students at whiteboard, I mean, pre-pandemic, but I saw students at whiteboards all of the time. And we have a lot of really great little rooms that have a whiteboard. Um, so if you're taking like a math class or a chemistry class and you wanna lay all that stuff out for you um, and wanna get really good at writing those formulas, I see, I, I feel like whiteboards are also very, very popular. <laughs> Um, I just saw a question in the chat that I'll answer and maybe so the question is what should biology students do in regards to researching in the library so it's really going to depend on the class and the assignment you're working on um, one thing I will say is that a lot of our science books are available as ebooks but if you are needing a starting point for research or have an assignment where you're not sure where to get started, this is when I would suggest you get in contact with your specific subject librarian. So you saw that page with all the subject librarians. We do have a science librarian. Her name's Melanie Sorrell. And um, on the main page, there's a section called Research and Write and a link to the subject librarians. So if you're needing help just kind of figuring out resources, like what databases to search, what resources I should use. Talking to your subject librarian might be a good starting point. And hopefully that answers your question. Another question that we got was, what is there, and you kind of talked a little bit about this through that, throughout the presentation, um, what is there to do other than for students who want to study at the library? One of the things I wanted to mention, um, in regard to the question of why would you come to the library to use a study room is um, there is a coffee shop in the library called Pete's. Uh, there are a lot of other, you know, vending opportunities to get food. So you can spend a lot of time in the library and eat meals, eat snacks. Um, it, it's a place where you can really, you, you, once you get in there, you don't have to leave. You've got pretty much everything you need. And I'll just reiterate too about Area 49. We have a bunch of spaces where, you know, I've, I've seen it time and time again. There's a student who has classes that are, you know, pretty, pretty distanced in terms of time. And they've got a big break in between those classes and they don't know what to do. So, you know, they come up and play games or they come to the maker space and they make something. Um, you know, or just kind of get invested in a new hobby in the maker space, learn something, you know, learn something new that's not even related to studies. Um, and if you, you know, if you are bored and you're on campus, come to the maker space and we can, we can help you with an idea to, to take up some, some of your time and it'll, it'll be a cool idea. Yeah. And I do think we should acknowledge that 
it's not going to look quite the same being in the library because we are asking people to distance and things like that. So um, that is part of it as well. So, you know, but it's still going to be a great place to study and be even if there's some restrictions just because we're set up that way. And Trey, yes, there is a librarian assigned to business. That is Angel Truesdale. One other thing I wanted to mention um, in regard to the previous question is we've really made an effort to delineate spaces in the library that are more collaborative. So if you're interested in working with groups or interacting with your friends, um, those are the spaces you would probably want to uh, stick out. And then other spaces are going to be more quiet. Um, they're quiet spaces where people can really focus and study. It's again, this semester gonna be a little bit tricky because some of those spaces were in the tower, but we recognize that people want uh, different, the students want different things when they come to the library. Some enjoy a very social um, interactive environment and others are looking for space where they can really focus in and, and not be bothered. So we've, we've um, made a lot of efforts to establish those spaces and then to communicate that so that people understand where they are. Were there other questions submitted? Nope, I'm looking through them, but there's one question, I don't know um, if you saw this. I may have missed it, but is there a librarian assigned to business field of study? Yes, there is. Um, it's um, Angel Truesdale. Oh, sorry. I was reading through the other comments, my bad. Um, Nope, but that's all the other questions that I see. I'm, I was scanning through the Excel, but it looks like y'all answered everything. And someone did type in a question during the um, chat or during a presentation saying, oh, what if I need a book that's on the floors that are closed? And like I said, we'll retrieve things for you and it'll be pulled for you. So basically you're still gonna have the same level of access to our materials. You just won't necessarily pull it yourself. But one thing in the catalog we have that you will probably want to pay attention to, it's called virtual browse. So uh, if you look up a book and then you scroll down the, the record for the book, you'll see other material that's shelved next to it. So it'd be similar content. So that's going to be a useful tool. And that's something else we have a tutorial on. So I would definitely, um, most of our tutorials are like two, three minutes top. So it might be a good way of getting an overview of some of the more deep detailed little things you do in the library. So you might want to take a look at those before the semester starts. And if you are living on campus, um, we will, like I said, we will be open the week of the 31st. So that's like a way they can get a sense of the setup and how things are going to look in this new climate as well. And I'm going to go ahead and share in the, um, oh, well, I hope this works. I don't know if you said people don't have access to the chat, but yeah. it is a link to the page that has all of our subject librarians listed. That works. Yep, you can share. Uh, you shared it, and you should be able to see it in the chat. All right. Last minute for any questions. Um, but if not. I think that's it. You can ask questions to the email address that's provided if um, we haven't answered anything or you need help with anything and um, or if you need more information on anything regarding the Atkins Library. But thank you to our panelists. I greatly appreciate this. Um, thank you to everyone who did attend. Um, just real quickly, um, as we wrap up through the day, there's some other webinars that some of you may be attending. So please uh, make sure you go to those. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, please utilize any contact information you've been given. Also, I want to just plug in real quickly the Niner Destination app. If you um, go ahead and download that, that has a lot of information information regarding Gold Rush, um, year one launch, uh, different forms of involvement, and the information regarding any of the Gold Rush events that the Atkins Library put uh, on will be on that app as well. 
um, we just consistently update that. So just make sure you download the Niner Destination app. It's also on our website, nsfs.uncc.edu. Um, but other than that, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day um, and have a happy Friday. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us.